now. 86 local authorities now have five or more confirmed cases of the Indian COVID variant. And the government has warned its next review of social distancing rules may now be delayed. So, should more have been done to stop the Indian variant coming into the country? In the first place, the Environment Secretary, George Eustace, joins us now from Westminster. Mr Eustace, very good morning to you. People are at a loss to understand how we've got to a situation where the Indian variant is likely within the next couple of days to be the dominant variant in the UK, and yet we didn't shut the border to India sooner. We have discussed the fact that uh, on, at the point where Pakistan, for instance, was put onto the red list, April the 9th, Pakistan had 21 cases per million. India had 50 cases per million. By the time that we put India on the red list, Pakistan had 23 cases per million, India 168. We were far too late and look what's happened. <clears throat> well, I think what I'd say is um, when you look at which countries should be going on the red list, we have to look at the prevalence in those countries. And one of the things you have to take into account is not just how many declared cases there are, but also their testing capacity. And so where India had much greater testing capacity than Pakistan. That's why a decision was taken to put Pakistan on earlier. We still put India on the list a full six days before this was a variant that was under investigation. Hang on a moment. But it was, but it's about, isn't it about cases? I mean, good for India that it had uh, more tests. It's got a huge number of cases. We saw uh, at the early stages more than twice the number of cases. We can't say, well, they're doing more tests, that's why they've got more cases. The well, point of testing is to reveal prevalence, and that's the point at which you take action. Yes, but that's precisely what you must do, because different countries have got this, different testing regimes. Some are doing far more comprehensive testing than others. And that's why we have to take that into account, because if you had a country that wasn't doing very much testing, sure. you might be missing something. So we look at a range of things. We look at their testing so capacity. they tested lots of people. They, we knew that they had 50 cases per million on April the 2nd, more than twice the number of Pakistan, but we decided not to put them on the red list. I think people are still confused as to why. And, of course, what people have inferred from that is we had a massive trade deal with India and the Prime Minister was about to go and visit the leader. And that is the reason we couldn't do something as important as put that country on our red list. Well, no, that's just not correct. And so the point that I'm trying to explain is if a country is doing more tests, then, yes, it will discover more cases. So you have to look at basically the, um, make an assessment about the prevalence of the virus in those countries. We also monitor people arriving to the UK. Uh, they all have to have pre-arrival tests now. So we look at the uh, incidence of that and weigh things up. And okay, the incidence well, okay, well, from let, Pakistan let's look was into, far higher than let, India. Let's, let's look into this, George. George, I'm, I'm really confused, Mr Eustace, because we have now spoke, heard from Boris Johnson on Friday. We heard from Matt Hancock on the weekend. We heard from Kwasi Kwarteng yesterday. We heard from you today. And all four of you, you, you are in the same government, you're in the same cabinet, you've given us four different reasons as to why India was not on the red list. Let's have a look at your three colleagues. What the, the relevant committee was looking at uh, was the threat of variants of concern uh, coming from uh, abroad. And at that stage, uh, India was not identified as having uh, a, a VOC, a, a variant of concern. So that was why the decision was taken. <clears throat> Pakistan, for instance, I think had, uh, I think, three times as much uh, of, a, uh, of variants of concern. The truth is uh, that when we put Pakistan on the red list and indeed Bangladesh, the positivity of those arriving from Pakistan and Bangladesh was three times higher that from India. The key thing is that all through that time we were ramping up uh, the vaccinations. Now, as Matt Hancock said yesterday, the Indian variant uh, is not uh, something which can overcome. There's no evidence to suggest that the Indian variant can overcome the vaccinations. So, George Eustace, so Boris Johnson claimed that Pakistan had a variant. He went on to say the South African variant. 
That is a lie. There was no other variants in Pakistan on April the 9th. That is an absolute fact. So he lied to the nation on Friday. And then we hear from Matt Hancock saying, oh, it's never about the number of cases. It was never about that. We kind of we were looking at the proportion of positive tests once they arrived here. I mean, why on earth would you allow people to come here free as, free as, free as they want and then just do the tests when they arrive? We've never heard that has been before as a policy. And yesterday, Kwasi Kwarteng trying to claim that actually, no, it's fine because we've got a great vaccine rollout. So that's what we were relying upon. And now you're saying, oh, we were looking at the testing system in India. Which one of those four excuses is the truth? I expect none of them are. It's just small lies. Well, I totally disagree with you. They're, they're all the same. Uh, and the Prime Minister and uh, <laughs> Matt Hancock... They're all the same lies? They're all just lies? Is that what no. you mean? They're all the same uh, truth, um, which is exactly as I've been uh, setting out in your programme. It's exactly the same as Matt Hancock and the Prime Minister said. Um, the incidence of uh, the virus in those arriving from Pakistan was far higher than from India. Uh, the reason India was declaring more cases is that they were doing more testing. Uh, all of that's clear. Matt well, Hancock actually, said I'm that stop, I'm going to stop you there because I know we'll run out of time very soon. Mr Eustace, it is an absolute lie. Matt Hancock, out of all of those people, you'd think Matt Hancock... Hancock, Secretary of State for Health, will be the one with the most accurate and reliable information, as he does this every day. He came out with a blatant lie yesterday in the House of Parliament. These are your figures. These are your figures based on the proportion of positive tests. Mm -hmm. NHS track and test and trace figures. And they claim that India had 5.1% of positive tests, Bangladesh 3.7%, mm -hmm. Pakistan 6.2%. Matt Hancock was claiming claiming something else yesterday. He three claimed, times as many. He claimed that it was three times as many. Mm. It's a lie. These are your own figures. Well, I, I, as I said, um, they would have been looking as well at the prevalence of testing in those countries. You look at a range of things. The, the amount of testing what? doing, the capacity of those countries to test, the number of cases that they're picking up, the number of cases we are picking up from our surveillance, and then you take a balanced assessment on all of that to try to ascertain what's going on in those countries. Yeah, but, OK, but if you look at India and say, well, they're doing lots of testing, it probably tells you because they've got a problem. I mean, if they're doing lots of testing, that is a sign that there is a problem in the country, isn't it? Um, well, uh, we're doing a lot of testing uh, as well, probably more than any other country in the world at the moment. Uh, different countries have got different capacities to do testing. Uh, I think we all understand uh, the reasons why that would be. So we have to take account of the prevalence of testing in those areas. Okay, we but take Mr in... Eustace, sorry, you're just shifting the goalposts again, because if we look at the graph and if we can get that back on screen, these are our tests. So that shows that India's uh, rate of positivity amongst travellers was not far off Pakistan's and was certainly ahead of Bangladesh's rate of positivity. And yet India was not at that point put on the red list. And again, we ask why. You're saying, well, they're doing a lot of tests and so they were showing a lot of cases. Since when is showing a lot of cases through testing a reason to discount the prevalence of COVID? Well, because um, some countries might be under-reporting because they're not picking up cases because they're not doing the testing. It's as simple as that. That's why it is a factor that you have to take into account in under these reporting. decisions. Mr. Eustace, I don't understand. They weren't under-reporting. They were well, reporting the a test, huge... Be... But yeah, we're, not, if... we're talking about a country which you're accusing of doing too much testing yeah. and therefore revealing about countries, too much COVID. Countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan were doing lower levels of testing than okay. India. Therefore, but, you would expect India yeah, yeah, but George, to detect but, more but, cases. It's very straightforward. So forward. you would expect India, therefore, to be put on the red exactly. list. Susanna's making the point. That I understand. That's the justification for Bangladesh and Pakistan. You weren't sure about their testing. Susanna's making the point. If you know that there's high cases and they're doing lots of testing... Why then do you err on the side of, well, it's still OK, we'll let them come? Well, we didn't. We did put India yes, then did. on... Yes, you we did. We put India on the yes, red Yes, you list. did. 20,000 Indian travellers came here. A, a combination of Indians and British, British Indians came here between the, the moment you locked down India and Pakistan and the time you eventually put them onto the red list. And we had 30 flights a week in that time. You were warned about this. Yvette Cooper, the Home Affairs Committee, warned you just before you went to put them on the red list, and you still had three days. Was, when you announced on the 19th you're going to put India on the red list, you still allowed them to come for three days. That was 900 people each day that came in that time who were then supposedly supposed to go home and self-isolate. 
George Eustace, why don't you just accept to the nation that you've made a mistake? Just remind you, 127,000 plus people have died of this coronavirus. Today, as I speak to you, someone is sat in an ICU suffering from an Indian variant that should never have been here. It's a mistake by the government. Please accept it. Well, uh, what we um, did is put India on the red list a full six days before that variant was even under investigation uh, and a full two weeks before it was declared uh, a variant of concern. So we did put India on the list as soon as we saw an uptick in prevalence and well before the uh, Indian variant was uh, de de declared okay. a, a variant of concern. Uh, Mr Eustace, um, I'll tell you why this is important. <sighs> Because we spoke to a community leader a little bit earlier on who said that, at the moment, people who are not getting the vaccine feel like they're being blamed, that all the onus is being put mm. on them. And they say, hang on a moment, you made a mistake when it came to putting India on the red list. It is the Indian variant which is now going to be the most prevalent variant in this country. It is not the fault of people who are not getting vaccinated. It is the fault of government for consistently being too late. Dominic Cummings, the former advisor to the government, described yesterday the, the border's policy as a joke. And frankly, this looks like he's having the last laugh. Well, look, I don't agree. And one, one of the things um, that we do know is that uh, the vaccine uh, does give protection against that Indian variant. We know that if people have uh, the second jab, it strengthens that. And that's why we are accelerating the rollout uh, of the second jab and trying to uh, condense uh, that time frame to eight weeks from the original 12. But the government on all of this uh, pandemic is doing everything that it can to get us out of this pandemic. We're the country that's been more successful, perhaps, than uh, nearly every other in the world in terms of the speed and pace of the rollout of the vaccine that offers us the route out of this pandemic a and that's speed and pace our which was not applied to closing <clears throat> the border but anyway we seem to have a variety of explanations for why that wasn't done yeah. and we'll leave viewers to make up their minds george eustace thanks very much indeed they're for joining. all the same but thank you thank you <laughs> they were all the same all of those apparently there's four different excuses they were all the same they are yeah and the one that comes tomorrow that'll be the same too